Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, we're going to talk about some of the tips and strategies that I do in order to prepare for my SAP S4 HANA certification. Now, this is in the context of me being an SAP functional consultant, and so I will divide this into two parts. The first part will focus on the pre-study tips or the prerequisites that I follow or consider before I actually start studying. Part two will focus on the how to study part. So this is where I share the actual strategies or the things that I do while studying for the exam. Overall, you can expect me to share how I study and balance my time. And at the same time, I will, of course, share those tips and strategies so that, who knows, you may even apply them when you decide to take your certification. As always, I will be using my blog post, so I will leave the link down in the description box below. You can always refer to that for guidance. I do want to share that there are a lot of tips available out there when you search Google or search YouTube even. And the goal for these two videos is for me to provide some sort of focus on the how to study part as well as the prerequisites. And I want to dwell less on the general or vague tips such as just study hard and have a positive mindset. Before we start with the pre-study tips, I do want to take the time by saying that these are my personal study strategies, tips and insights, and they may seem a bit back to college, if that makes any sense, but you know what? It works for me. And I understand that in most cases, Studying for your SAP certification exam will be on top of your daily workload. So for those of you who don't know, I am a full-time SAP functional consultant. So that means by day, I do my usual workload. I make sure I'm on track with my deliverables. And you know, at the end of the day, after work, I need to find or squeeze in some time to study for the certification. So number one is mindset matters. It sounds really cliche, but it's realistic. I do want to emphasize that having the right mindset does matter. So you need to be able to commit the effort that you will exert when you study for the certification exam. So I did mention here that in my case, I did put in a lot of effort and it's not a five day effort. It's this is me talking about one month or more. So when I say that mindset matters, it's less about the usual be positive or you can do this. We're gearing towards the statement, you are doing this for yourself. So, you know, at the back of your mind, you know that this is your commitment to yourself. You want to be certified. You want to level up your career or you want to grow as a consultant whichever sort of purpose you have for wanting to pass that exam, I do want to stress that the efforts that you will be doing will be worth it. Number two is that you can make use of a time management matrix. This is also known as the Eisenhower matrix, but you can just call it a time management matrix. And the concept here is that every day you may have a lot of tasks, so multiple tasks at hand, and it can be really overwhelming to know that you have a lot of things to do. So when you are dealing with that type of scenario, you can try to file those tasks or even activities into four boxes. We can choose to look at the time management matrix in another way. So if I scroll down, you can see that there are some examples in the image. So for box one, this is the finish ASAP. Box two will be the next in line priority. So after you do the tasks in box one, you can move on to the next in line priority. Box three will be the delegate or decide. The last one will be something that 
can most likely wait. So you can move that to another day. If we add further examples, box one will be your work deliverable. So you're working as a consultant, you need to be able to write your functional specifications or do your configurations, talk with the clients. Then this is something that you need to be able to do ASAP, work deliverables. And for the next box, which is the next in line priority, I choose to think of it as I need to study for today because in line with my mindset, this is part of my long-term strategies. The third box will be interruption. So you'll receive maybe a call. Someone will message you asking to consult or something like that. You need to be able to check the priority. So if it's really an urgent thing that needs to be solved right now, then you need to be able to finish that for today. But if it's something that can be done on another day or if it can wait, then it's not necessarily important for you to finish. The same goes with additional tasks that can wait. So basically, these are tasks that have no time pressure and at the same time, they're not important. So it's up to you how you want to visualize your time management matrix. And the overall concept here is to be able to manage what we do in a day. And of course, understand that not everything is important. I only do this when there are too many tasks or activities in a day. Other than that, if I have a pretty standard set of tasks or if I'm not overloaded, then I don't see the point of using this type of strategy and making the day more complex than it should. Number three is be wary of shortcuts and scams. So some of you may search on Google and or even look through Facebook or other social media and you'll find that there are people online who offer 100% passing rate if you purchase their certification dump or any sort of 100% passing rate claim. To me, it sounds a bit fishy or it can strike up some concerns. I did mention them over here below. For example, is this real? If I purchase this, will I regret it? The certification exam changes, how do they update the certification dump? All of those doubts come into my mind. And overall, I did mention that it seems highly unrealistic to put my 100% trust in that certification dump and believe that I will pass the exam. I also have read statements in official SAP websites cautioning people about the certification dump scams or schemes. Honestly, this is your discretion. This is going to be your decision. Me, on the other hand, I have not tried this at all, so I cannot vouch for this. And honestly, it does seem a bit uh, sketchy to me. I added a couple of analogies below, so if I were to go for the shortcut or the certification dump purchase, there are going to be two outcomes. It's either I pass or I fail. If I were to avoid the shortcut and, you know, make do with my studying, so on and so forth, there are still two outcomes. It's either I pass or fail. So the results would, of course, depend on what type of actions you choose to take. In my opinion, if I were to go for the shortcut, if I pass it as promised on the certification dump claim, I would end up questioning my skills in the future. Number four is decide on the certification and be aware of the exam coverage. So you need to decide on what type of certification you will be taking. You can do the research, just search on Google about the exam coverage. It's readily available in official SAP websites. And if this is your first time to take the certification exam, I would suggest that you consider the following. So what is your goal? You need to be able to consider your current skill set. Are you already working with hands-on experience in SAP? Or are you trying to steer your career towards SAP and a certain SAP capability? 
So depending on your goal, even if it's not part of this uh, two guides or basis, whatever your goal is, you need to consider that when you choose your certification exam. So for those of you who are not aware, you can check out several SAP learning journeys. And this is a great help for you to use as basis. You don't need a user ID to look through those. And if you're looking for an example, I did link here the SAP learning journey for SAP S for HANA Finance or for financial accounting. You will notice that I do have a screenshot below and it shows you a learning journey. It's going to start off with an overview and eventually you work your way towards becoming competent in customizing, configuration, etc. as mentioned in the image below. So this is an example of the learning journey again for SAP S for HANA Finance and towards the end you'll see that there is a tile for SAP Certified Application Associate. So this is the certification exam and you can hover over this tile to know more. So over here you can see that there are certification details. You can click on the link and it will give you an overview of the exam coverage and a couple of more details for your use. You'll see that you'll be given three R's for the exam and you need sample questions for this specific certification then you can click on this link below overall at this point you should know what SAP certification you're aiming for please make sure it is the latest release you will also know the corresponding learning journey that will help you obtain the SAP certification so that would in this example we know that for financial accounting we do have Asset Accounting involved, Financial Closing and SAP, Basics of Customizing for Financial Accounting for General Ledger, Accounts Payable, Accounts Receivable in SAP S for HANA, so on and so forth. Next, you will also know the topics that you should be learning or studying with the help of the learning journey. And when you click on the Certification Details link, you'll also know the actual exam coverage and the sample questions for that specific exam. Now that you're aware of these things, you can pattern your learning journey to your study plan. Now this study plan we will discuss later on. Number five is fix your study area. And I did mention this because I planned to take the exam online. So that means I will be taking the certification exam in the comfort of my own home. So that means I need to follow certain guidelines when I take the exam. So for this type of scenario, you need to make sure that your table has no clutter on them. You don't have miscellaneous items on top of your desk. You just have your laptop, for example, and the lamp, that's it. It's basically written in the guidelines of what to do when you take the certification exam. So what I do is, as much as possible, I try to mimic the area on the actual exam day. So in a way, this conditions me to be used to the environment that I'm in while I'm studying. So there is less of a disruption during exam day. This information will be found in the PDFs linked in the exam overview. Number six is to create your study plan or worksheet. So in my case, I create my study plan and I patterned it after the learning journey, which I showed you a while ago. And to me, I made it as my one stop shop for certification details, outlines, dates, links, so on and so forth. It contains the following. So my study schedules, outlines, how I divide the study into chunks. So I do daily work and I need to be able to balance my time and how I go through the learning materials provided. It also contains what I take note of as I go through the learning materials as well as the duration. So today it could be two hours, the next day it could be three hours, the next day it could be 30 minutes. It depends on my study schedule. This is my personal worksheet and if you're interested to download the template and know more about how I utilize this worksheet, you can head over to this link. Number seven is decide on the learning material and or method. 
at the end of the day, you know what learning material or method you prefer. So you can opt for a book, an actual printed copy of an SAT book, an ebook where you read through Kindle or through a laptop or phone, a sit down class, videos, so on and so forth. It depends on your preference and which learning material you best work with. In my case, I prefer online self learning materials compared to an actual sit down class or an online class where you follow a weekly schedule the reason why i prefer this type of approach is because i want to take as much time as i can on certain topics so for example i may spend two hours on general ledger accounting and move on to asset accounting which will take me for example five hours it really depends so if you want to be able to control that level of, of study time or learning time then this is a good approach at the same time remember that i need to be able to juggle the studying on top of my current workload so for example today i may have a project that will be going live and i have spent a lot of effort onto that exerted a lot of effort and so given that type of scenario i want to have this flexibility where i control the time and just so you're aware fortunately enough i was given access to sap learning hub and i was able to utilize e-learning videos ebooks and even sap environments for hands-on exercises this is all at my own pace. This is not a requirement because others are able to pass the exam by reading SAP books or ebooks. So, again, it depends on what type of learning material or method you prefer. That's about it for the part one video, which is the pre study tips and the prerequisites. Scrolling down to the summary, let's review what we discussed. So in terms of prerequisites or pre-study tips, number one, mindset matters. You're doing this for yourself. This is part of your long-term goal. Number two, utilize a time management matrix when you have so many tasks for the day and you don't know where to start. Number three, be wary of shortcuts and scams. You never know. At the end of the day, you want to be able to pass the exam knowing that it's with your effort and your skill. Number four, decide on the certification and be aware of the exam coverage. So I linked the sample learning journey and certification exam details in this post. Number five, fix your study area. Try to mimic the same area where you plan to take the exam in so you're used to it. Number six, create your study plan or worksheet. And again, if you're interested to download my template, I've included a link in that portion. And lastly, decide on the learning material and or method. So if you're an ebook person, go for it. If you're into videos, go for it, so on and so forth. I hope this helps. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in part two.